Okay, let's study a, a particularly simple system using this new approach of transfer functions, and we'll study a system called a first-order system, which is defined by the uh, value of Gs, which is the Laplace transform of the uh, delta input, is given by k over 1 plus tau s. And uh, the two parameters here, k, is uh, called the gain parameter, the gain. And then tau is called the uh, time constant. And I'll explain what those are in a minute, why it's called that. OK, so to understand what it's going to do, let's assume that we're giving it an input. So here, the system again is like this, right? We have a we have GS over here, and we're going to give it the input US, which is the Laplace transform of the input, and it's going to get the output YS. Okay, and so we know that the YS is given by the product of US and GS. And uh, just for simplicity of notation, we'll just say y equals ug, where the parameter s is, is given. It's understood as the parameter. So uh, here we are going to look at the uh, output when the input is this function called the step function. So it's 0 over here before time 0. So this is time. This is the value u of t. And before 0, it's 0. And then at time uh, zero, it goes to one and it stays at one forever. So it's sort of the system is given a, a sudden input of one at time zero, and then it just continues to be there. And of course, we recognize this is just integral of the uh, delta function, delta t dt. So this is what's called the u of uh, it's uh, the info, uh, step input u t is defined in this way. So uh, u of s, which is a Laplace transform is given uh, by 1 over s. That's the standard transform for the unit. And so ys is going to be given by 1 over s multiplied by the uh, gs, which is at k over 1 plus tau s. And so this is nothing more than what k over s times 1 plus tau s. Now, this looks like our form that we looked, wanted to get. This is sort of the ND, uh, NS over DS numerator denominator. And if you remember, what we want to do is to find the roots of the denominator, and that will tell us the partial fraction expansion. And so the roots for this are given by uh, S equals 0, which corresponds to this thing over here, and S equals minus 1 over tau, which corresponds to this over here. And so using those roots, we can write the partial expansion expansion of this as k times 1 over s minus tau over 1 plus tau s. And so if ys is given by this, we now need to invert this to find yt. And yt is, uh, so it will be small y of t. Um, y of t will be given by... Uh, just using the uh, Laplace uh, table as uh, k times 1 minus e to the power minus t over tau. And uh, so this is uh, actually a pretty straightforward thing to plot. And the reason it's straightforward is because we know what e, e to the minus x looks like. So e to the minus x is basically, uh, which is, and these are all reals, it's just the exponential going down like that. And so we're going to take 1 minus e to the minus, and, and it starts at 0, and it goes, well, let me draw this properly. Actually, I'll just draw it over here. So uh, when tau is, when t is 0, so this is the x-axis, when t is 0, uh, this, is, this becomes 1 minus e to the minus 0, which is 1 minus 1, which is 0, so it starts over here. And then what happens is, as we go towards infinity, what happens is that... Um, this term for t equals infinity goes to 0. And so this becomes essentially k. So this is the asymptotic value. And we are essentially subtracting 1 minus an asymptotic value. So it's going to rise pretty fast. And then it will become asymptotic to this. If we were to fill in those dashed lines in red, uh, 
you're going to get a curve that goes asymptotically to k as t goes to infinity. Um, and uh, you can see that it rises steeply at first, and it reaches, uh, it's easy to show that it reaches the uh, basically 66% of its uh, final value, 1 minus 1 over e of that value is reached at time tau. And uh, it reaches uh, at 5 tau, it's going to reach basically almost the last value. It's going to be reaching a value which is, turns out to be 99.33% at 5 tau. And so uh, this is uh, a nice smooth or exponential rise, and then it quickly reaches in 5 tau to the value here, and then eventually it reaches the, reaches the value k. So what's, going, what's happening? We're giving it an input of 1, and we're getting an output of k. And so that's why k is the gain. The gain parameter tells us how much we're going to scale up the input by. And the time constant tau tells us how soon we're going to reach it. So we're going to reach the uh, approximately 66% of the final value, or 63% of the final value in about one time constant. We're going to reach 99% in five times the time constant. So that's what we call it the, the time constant. Um, the uh, step response can be rewritten. So this is what's called a step response, because we're actually uh, taking the output we're computing the output when the input is a step. This is the step input. And it has two parts to it. We can rewrite this as k minus k e to the minus t, so t over tau. And so this part over here is the steady state response. This is what you expect to see in the long term. So in fact, this is the long term part over here is k, and that's the steady state. It's called the steady state response. And we have a transient. We have it uh, over here, which is this part in the beginning, which is over here. And this is what's called the transient response. And so this is going to be true for any system. It is given a step input. It's going to be giving, uh, it's going to respond uh, initially in this phase over here in some way. That's the initial part of the transient response. And after the uh, initial part, it's going to get into the steady state response. And so in a practical system, if we were to give it a step input, we can extract from the response what k and tau are by, compute, by, by measuring the system's response and saying, okay, if it looks like a first order system, it's going to have this kind of behavior. And then we can say, well, it reads its 99 percentile value in, in five, let's say 10 seconds. It means tau is two. And we also see that when you give it an input of 1, the output is k. Let's say it's 5. That means k is 5. So we can rewrite the input, the, the system, uh, determine the system parameters uh, through actual measurements for a, for a first order system. So that concludes our analysis of uh, this simple system. We'll now move on to a more complicated system called a second order system.